Uh, hello viewers, welcome to my channel and uh, today's topic is uh, secretin stimulation test, you know. Uh, but before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe or uh, share these videos, you know, to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit uh, my website, you know, which is uh, www.diseasesandtreatment.com uh, or alternatively you can click the link in the description here just below this video you know and once you click that button uh, that link you know it will take you to a new page of my website so you can find the information there now I come to the topic you know what is uh, uh, like a secretin stimulation test you know but before that we need to know what is secretin you know you know uh, when partially digested food uh, from your stomach arrives in the small intestine and then your small intestine produces a hormone called secretin you know and uh, uh, it makes uh, your pancreas release a fluid that contains the inactive digestive enzymes and uh, bicarbonates you know and uh, the fluid moves from uh, pancreas into the upper portion of the small intestine uh, known as uh, duodenum, you know. And the fluid uh, uh, function is that it uh, neutralizes your stomach acids to activate your uh, like uh, pancreatic en uh, enzymes, you know. And uh, these enzymes help your body to break food uh, uh, down and absorb its nutrients, you know. And some pancreatic uh, diseases such as uh, uh, cystic fibrosis or uh, like uh, um, uh, chronic pancreatitis and the pancreatic cancer, you know, they make it harder for your pancreas to respond to secretin, you know. And when this happens, uh, your pancreas cannot deliver enough enzymes uh, to your small intestine, you know, and to help to digest the food and break down it to simplest forms to where it can be absorbed, you know. And uh, this is called like pancreatic insufficiency. This condition, this this uh, abnormality is called pancreatic insufficiency, you know. Now, you know, uh, cystic fibrosis, which is known as uh, CF2 and uh, pancreatitis and the pancreatic cancer can cause this uh, uh, pancreatic insufficiency. And uh, it is a genetic disease and if you have uh, this uh, like uh, you know uh, this fibrosis cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease you know and uh, if you have uh, the cystic fibrosis you may develop the mucus in your lungs uh, and pancreas you know and the mucus can obstruct the ducts leading out of the pancreas and make it harder for your body to deliver the pancreatic fluids into the uh, first part of the small intestine known as duodenum, you know. And uh, the children who have the pancreatic insufficiency often have the cystic fibrosis. And uh, they may also be like uh, uh, malnourished due to the poor absorption of the digested food from the small intestine to the bloodstream, you know. And uh, the pancreatitis is uh, Another condition which can cause this, you know, is this insufficiency, you know. And uh, uh, the pancreatitis is the inflammation of your pancreas. And if you have pancreatitis, enzymes that are normally uh, inactive uh, until they reach the small intestine, they become activated earlier, you know, okay. And they start digesting while still in your pancreas, you know. And uh, the symptoms of the pancreatitis include like the abdominal pain or the nausea and the vomiting, you know. So it, it, this way, they, uh, due to the early activation, you know, they start digesting uh, the pancreatitis, which is the cause of inflammation. You know. And if uh, you have a chronic pancreatitis or uh, uh, maybe a pancreatic cancer, you know, so you may have damage to the cells that produce the pancreatic uh, enzymes, you know, and you will have uh, damage to the duct whose function is that it delivers the juices uh, or the enzymes to your small and from the pancreas to the small intestine you know and this will lead to uh, insufficient pancreatic enzymes in your small intestine to properly digest the food and uh, in adults the pancreatic insufficiency 
is most commonly associated with the pancreatitis, you know, uh, but less often uh, damage can also be caused by the pancreatic uh, cancer, you know. So these are the causes. Now, uh, next thing is how do the doctors diagnose that someone have the this uh, uh, pancreatic disease or, uh, you know, you know, your doctor need to perform several tests to diagnose the pancreatic disease. And uh, uh, the secretin stimulation test can uh, show them how your uh, like pancreas function in response to the uh, secretin, you know. And it can help your doctor to learn how your pancreas uh, uh, works during the digestion, you know. And uh, it also called the pancreatic function test. So it's a secretin stimulation test or the pancreatic function test. These are the two different names for the same test, you know. And uh, this test is uh, invasive, you know, uh, and conducted only when uh, other evidence suggests that you have the uh, pancreatic insufficiency because this is invasive test, you know. It's not easy to perform, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, there are certain preparation is required for this test that is an invasive procedure, you know. And uh, you will need... Uh, uh, to fast 12 hours before the procedure, you know, and your doctor will ask you to avoid eating uh, or drinking anything, you know, uh, including water, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, the undergoing this test uh, on an empty stomach reduces the risk of complications, you know, so this it's important you fast, you know, and your doctor will, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, test how your pancreas responds to the secretin by uh, inserting a tube uh, through your nose uh, into your esophagus and through your stomach until it reaches to the first part of the in small intestine which is known as duodenum you know and uh, your doctor will then inject uh, secretin uh, like uh, intravenously into your body you know and uh, if your body releases the pancreatic fluids in response to that uh, injection, you know, secretin injection, you know, uh, that fluid will be uh, removed uh, through the tube uh, sitting in your uh, duodenum, you know, uh, within an hour or two, you know. And, uh, you know, there are some risk factors uh, of the test, you know, uh, you may experience like irritation in your nose and uh, uh, like gagging sensations when your doctor inserts a tube, you know, and uh, as it, it is invasive procedure, you know, and there is also a small risk that uh, the tube could be inserted into your trachea, which is the uh, airway to the, which is the tube that um, uh, goes to the lungs, you know, and uh, uh, instead of, uh, instead of his vagus, you know, so uh, your doctor will make sure that the tube is placed correctly before uh, continuing with the test, you know. It's rare, but it can happen, you know, so, uh, and uh, mostly that your doctors are well trained um, uh, to insert those tubes, you know. I know the next thing is uh, interpretation of the test results, you know. You know, the abno if uh, your test results are abnormal, uh, which means that you have some degree of pancreatic uh, insufficiency, you know. And the abnormal results may uh, mean you have uh, cystic fibrosis, you may have like uh, pancreatitis or maybe the pancreatic cancer, you know. And the abnormal results from this test alone uh, are not enough for your doctor to, to diagnose uh, these uh, conditions, you know. And they will need uh, to perform other tests uh, to learn what is causing that uh, pancreatic insufficiency, you know. And uh, it's not easy to diagnose the pancreatitis, you know, and, uh, or the pancreatic cancer, you know. And uh, uh, for one thing, uh, many symptoms of the pancreatitis are similar to those of the pancreatic cancer, you know. So many of the symptoms are not specific to the disease of the uh, uh, pancreas either, you know. So they can pinpoint uh, to a number of different diseases. So there are also different types of the pancreatitis, you know. And you may have acute or chronic pancreatitis. 
and each type requires different tests before the doctor can make diagnosis so that's why i said it's it's not easy to diagnose uh, uh, the underlying uh, condition which is causing that uh, insufficiency you know and uh, uh, you know if your doctor suspects that uh, uh, you have the pancreatitis uh, they will probably conduct the blood work you know so you may undergo the stool testing and imaging tests uh, as well you know and if you have chronic pancreatitis uh, you have a high then normal risk of uh, uh, like contracting the pancreatic cancer you know and if your doctor believes you might have the pancreatic cancer uh, then they will order the tests such as a biopsy of your pancreas you know and which is again is an invasive procedure now the pancreatic disease uh, uh, mostly or often manifests with the symptoms of uh, abdominal pain uh, nausea and vomiting you know and uh, your doctor can use several tests to diagnose the cause of your symptoms for example uh, and the secretin simulation test allows them to test how your pancreas function is in response to secretin you know and this is an important hormone uh, in the digestive process and if you uh, this uh, uh, like a secretin stimulation test results uh, as uh, as abnormal you know so you may have a specific uh, pancreatic disease such as pancreatitis pancreatic cancer or maybe cystic fibrosis you know and speak to your doctor uh, to learn more about the diagnosis and the treatment options and uh, outlook you know uh, thank you very much for watching this video this was what the secretin stimulation test or the pancreatic function test is you know if you need more information about uh, any disease any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to subscribe this channel and to subscribe you can click the uh, button is a red button just below this video you know so this way you can subscribe thank you goodbye